everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quote Company, and I am here today with Natalie and Hi. with Misty because it's Triple Play Day. Best day and ever. today, right? I love Triple Play. <laughs> anyway, today we're teaching you three different things to do with the Lemoyne Star. And so we call it the Dashing Star, mm -hmm. but we have several names for it. Yep. And Lemon today star. we'll probably cover them all. Anyway, Natalie, I think you're up first. All right. So Natalie, I love your quilt. I think it's darling. It's I so do cute. too. I think it turned out really great. I love how you took the old pattern and really kind of made it modern. Yeah. yeah. And I, I love the sashing idea. You. Yeah. I decided She's to, so instead of having it be sashing, I made it part of the block. Right. So then you can twist it and turn I it. I love I, that idea. I just feel like you just elevated the whole thing. I well, love it. Thank you. Show us how to so do it. So I called my quilt Scattered Shoe Fly Stars because the shoe fly is part of the star block and you can scatter them all around. Mm -hmm. um, it's really cute. It's 80 by 80. I went ahead and quilted it with Time Warp. It's one of my favorite new designs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I use this great print on the back. It's this beautiful oh, hexagon. I think it's just so cute. This whole line is It's beautiful. really done. It's, it's really beautiful. Line. All right, so to make my quilt, you're gonna need one pack of 10 inch print squares. And I use Daisy Fields by Beverly McCullough for Riley Blake. It's so cute. Look at like, these it? little hexes on here. It is, it's oh, beautiful. It. There's gold flecks it. throughout and bees and yeah. flowers and dots. It's just beautiful. It's darling. You'll need about four and a half yards of background fabric, and that makes up all the white that you'll see. Yep. <laughs> um, and you'll need, for backing, seven and a half yards of regular uh, 45 or two and a half yards of a 108. All right, so let's get started. This is gonna be good. So the first thing you'll wanna do is, is cut your background fabric into lots of different sizes. We'll need 10 inch squares for um, the stars, and then a few other sizes, four and a half, two and a half, and two and a half inch strips. Awesome. So we'll go through that as we, we get, get to it. Here. I've got some 10 inch squares cut already. Then you're gonna wanna divide up your fabric because we need matching sets to make all of our, I'll need um, two of those. Oh, okay. We need to make some matching sets so that we can make our stars. I'm such a good helper. It, it <laughs> looks, I did it um, in contrasting or just different colors. Yeah. I wanted them to stand out from each other. Lights and dark. So you want to see your work. You and you to, need you, know. you need two of each. Now, in my quilt, um, two of each could be two that are exactly the same, or it could be two that are the same color that you can't really tell them apart. So you'll see on, That's really a good on tip. this one right here, these two yellows are different, but you can't really tell in the quilt because they're so it just similar. Blends together. So this line is great because it does have duplicates of many of the prints, but the ones that you don't, you can kind of just put your your blues and yellows yeah, I together. Never, I would have never noticed that. That's yeah. That's really a good tip. Yep. Just so you know, there's a few that I did that way, and a few that had just the perfect numbers. Yep. So what you're going to do is take all all four of these and two of them, you're going to pair together, and then the other two you're going to pair with a white square. And we are going to draw the line on the back. We're going to make an X. What size are your squares ending up? They're going to end up four and a half by the time we're done. And this set will give you enough to make two um, dashing star or lemon star. All right. So we're just going to draw these lines real quick. And then Misty, I'll have you sew on either side of both lines. All right. We always say either side, but it really should be both sides. It's true. Yes. Every once in a while, somebody will correct me in the comments, and I'm always so like, So on right, both right, sides right. of the line. So on both sides. So this is the key to this, this star, is that two go together, the two colors go together, mm -hmm. and then the other, the light goes with the white, and the dark goes with the white. And yep. so it's going to be the same for all of our quilts. Yeah, which is really cool because once you've got this method down, you can make this lemon star or Lemoyne star or dashing star pretty much any size you want. And yeah, it's based on a square, so this is a good Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. I love how we all just stand and watch her sew. So fast. Okay, so while Misty's sewing the rest of these, we will cut 
So the first cut that you want to make is your vertical and horizontal cut. And that's because there's no lines to mark them. Mm -hmm. Mom taught me this little hack. You can get lost very easily if you yeah. do it the other way. So if we go ahead, we're going to line it up and cut right through the center and then right through the center horizontally as well. And then you can cut on your lines diagonally in both directions. And then if you have a clearly perfect, you could square them up from this point or we can press them all open and, um, and square them with the block lock. How do you like to do it? I like to use the block lock tool. Okay. And I think right. we've got one in here. So I'm just gonna press and these. And we do, so that's which means perfect. I'm gonna leave my dark color to the top you know, set that seam, roll it back. And I'll start handing these off to you so you can start squaring. Okay. What are you squaring them to? So I'm squaring, I squared all of my blocks to four and a half. And that's, um, that's pretty much as big as you can get. You can see these, there's just not a lot of space left over here. And the cool thing to remember on this is you actually do get two blocks. Yes. You get two stars. Yep, there's plenty. Now I do have these. You have them cut? I don't know if I actually squared them though. I might, I might not. Oh, well, I guess I did. Let me check your work here. I'm just, just gonna be a mother, check your work. I might not have squared these, all of them. Yeah, these are not squared. These are squared. Oh yeah, okay, okay, I got what you're doing here. What, I squared enough for one block? Yeah, you squared enough for one. Okay, so you're gonna, you're gonna continue by cutting all of your half square triangles and squaring them all up to four and a half, and then I'm gonna use the ones that I've already got squared to show you how to lay it out. All right, so, so I always here. start by putting together my pinwheel in the middle. That just helps me how I do to it keep too. it straight. I'm gonna scoot that. All right. Whoops. <laughs> okay, so then you're gonna bring in your matching colors and I just attach them like this. This one. Like a little puzzle, isn't it? Yep. Does this one need to, nope, I got one here, huh? There we go. Okay. Perfect. And here's these yellows. I did accidentally sew one together like that when I was making the which quilt. Is, which is a cool and it was That's such a Dutchman's an, puzzle. Such an interesting thing. I was like, what did I do wrong? Something is different. Yeah. Here's these. So you're just matching your colors and then you take your little four and a half inch white background squares and put them in the corners. That's another. And then we just assemble the block in rows. All right. Just do this and... Yep, that's perfect. Alrighty. Oh, that's interesting. You're doing it in rows. I would have done it rows this way. I would have sewn this to this and this to this and then sewn the two together. Hmm. I'm not sure why, but I would have. We just all have I don't know. I just, we have our different ways. In my ways. head, it was like put together a row and then join mm -hmm. them and... Well, and it works, right? Yeah. Yeah, and you'll get to whatever the end result is by doing either method. Absolutely. And we're really walking you through this one. So then when we do the others, mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we'll probably... Right. Can you press the Yes, one? I can. Thank you. You know, we'll probably um, not show you every detail because it's the same as this is, but I don't know. We They're all very depends. similar. <laughs> they are all very similar. The method for making the Lemoyne star. Yep. It works. Such a fun block. All right. Pass that, that on one. over, girl. I don't really have to do anything. I know. <laughs> this is great. 
I know everybody, every, well, you know, we'll get comments after these uh -huh. and it'll be like, I want my I own tea. ironer. I want my it own really sewer. Is the Let's best. flip that over. There we go. And really the trick with yours, Natalie, is this sashing, which is, which mm -hmm. is really cool. Yeah. No, I'm excited to get to that part. Yeah. It's really, really simple. There's that one. And I don't know if I'm ironing these the same way. Uh, probably what I should be doing is ironing all one row this way and all one row the other. That does make it easier, but it's not. You can flip as you go too, and then yeah. we'll, we'll kind of re-iron. It's a pretty flat block. Um, doesn't have a lot of bulky seams really. The pinwheel in the middle I just is can't, probably the I just love these colors. I do um, too. And the and the and the, the, the use flex. the use of that hexagon in these fabrics. Yeah. And so this the words on this, what do the words say? It says words are like honey. Yep, kind oh, nice. words. Be, be kind. kind. Uh, you'd get inspired just sewing with this. Yeah. yeah. No. All right. Start oh. sewing this together. Oh. Yep. All All right. Right. Those two. Yep. Perfect. And we're almost done with block one. There we go. You know you did it right because everything matched up. It all does. That's the beauty of squaring too. It really oh makes life so much easier. Yeah, I had no idea what I was missing all those years. I wasn't squaring. Mm -hmm. And when I finally started to square, and the reason I didn't square was because none of the tools made sense to me. And when the, when the clearly perfect slotted trimmer came out, just down the All side. Of a sudden, that made, yes. that made sense okay. to me. And I'll have mom's uh, oh, yep. press that. There you go. And once once one tool makes sense to your brain for squaring, I think then you can do it. Then it makes yeah. sense. Then what you, what's happening, Matt, you know, you figure it out. Because now I can square with anything. Right. But for so a long time. Trial and error. Find the tool that you like the best that makes you comfortable and gives you the result that you like. All right. It's looking good. We're close. Making my scenes. Now, in yes. the original, mm -hmm. we snowballed these, and that made our Your sashing. Our sashing with our so um, in this block, shoe fly. we only snowball one corner. Oh, nice! Mm -hmm. Oops, that All right, one. you want to just right. sew that on there, yep. and then I'll press the whole thing. Absolutely. Okay. All right. All right. So, do you want to start on this stuff? Are you yep. ready? Yep. So, so the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take some of our print blocks and cut them into two and a half inch squares. Okay. And that was just easier for me because I wanted a variety of colors and I, I wouldn't get as much variety if I made four that. patches with strips. So I just cut them down. If you don't want that much variety, you can make all your four patches out of the same colors and that's totally up to you. Um, so let's do, uh, how about a light and a yellow? Let me iron this real quick like Misty. All righty. I do have a four patch made already, so we don't actually have to sew this because it's super simple. You're just putting two, you two know, and a half inch squares. four two and a half inch squares together and just making, I think, um, just the, the amount you need for the quilt. Okay. And now, that is going to go. Right at this moment, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I can't see the four patch. That's the magic. That's of the that's magic. the magic. Yep. Yes. So you're making a bunch of little four patches. And then what you're gonna do is um, snowball one of these corners, which honestly the, the block could spin any direction. Right. So you could just snowball one corner and spin it the way you need it when you get there. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's put this color right down here. You can draw a line if you want to, or you can use diagonal seam tape. Okay. And we're just gonna snowball that one corner. I, I cannot see this coming together. This is so fun for it's me. It's like a cool. little it's like a little present that happens because uh -huh. you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to be pretty I cool. I love it. I think you're going to like this a lot. There we go. All right. So we're going to trim that off and press it back. Okay. Then right. we're also going to snowball one of these corners on our four patch with a white two and a half. Oops. I love this. So go ahead and do that. It needs to be on one of the prints because you need, you need your colors to line up. Okay. So pick whichever print you want to snowball, snowball that corner. There we go. Okay. And 
that's where your four patch went. <laughs> All right, so this block is 16 and a half inches. So you're gonna cut some 16 and a half inch strips and those are gonna go right in here. And two of these strips, you're also going to snowball. So this, this one out here is gonna get snowballed going one direction. This this one goes that way. And so it's, oh, so that's I, I why always you have to like one big piece. Yes. Because it has okay. to snowball no, inside. No, okay, because I'm yep. like. And I have to, you have to do them opposite. So see how they, they go opposite directions. Uh -huh. oh, and okay. that is because this one here is gonna make that corner of the shoe fly. And this one over here makes this corner. Oh, that's so cool. See that is that very works. cool. I love that. All right, let's sew so that then, up. Yeah, then you can go ahead and stitch these together. Okay. And these can fo follow right behind it. Uh-huh. Nice long seams, I like it. Yep. That is really fun, isn't it? Isn't it? It's I'm so looking at easy. it and I'm like, well, why didn't you just cut a and then you? I the could little... have, but if I, I if I did, I would have a hard time getting that snowball have, into yeah. the middle. No, this definitely makes it easy. All right, that one All right. can go. Click the cut on that and I'll press yeah, it. Okay, excellent. And we can attach the four patch to that. Oops, not quite lined up there. It probably will be okay. You think? Yeah, it's a big white strip. <laughs> all right, all right. There's no point to match up there. That's true. All right. Oh, that goes on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it laid out for a minute and then I'll, I'll let her all right. um, press it together or sew it together because I, I just want everybody to see how it looks before it's completely sewn up. Yep. It is pretty easy though, right? I mean, I think so. It's a Lemoyne star and a four patch and then just some snowballed, snowballed corners. Yeah. And there you have it. You've got this magical little shoe fly down there. I love so it. Cute. And I feel like you could do this with so many different things, Gosh, right? Yes. All right. So let's go ahead and attach this one. And then you can do this one next. Well, and people, we've been doing this with nine patches and four patches for a long time, but mm -hmm. now we've got this shoe fly. That's so cool. Yeah, that's so fun. clever, clever girl. I think it's cute. I like it. Yeah, she's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> and then on this one, you just want to watch that um, that little cross seam in the middle. Make sure you get a good. Good nest. Nesting on there. A good nest. Yep. Got it. Really though, because everything is kind of cut to size, it's not difficult. Do you want it pressed or do you want to just to. stitch it together and it then up. we can press the whole thing? That works for me. So you're just, yeah, these are the only two points you've got to watch right okay. there in that little um, shoe fly. Okay. And then I'll show you how it goes in the quilt because that's also fun. It's just mm -hmm. a rotation. One row goes up and down and the other row goes down and up. <laughs> oh, okay. And it really, like you can't even see where they all are because they're in so many different places. I just love it. I think it's really, really fun. And it comes together really quick. It does. And because the block is so large, you get a large quilt really fast. Yeah. Right. With that, a lot of fun space to put quilting in. That is actually one of the things I really loved about the original Big Stars quilt uh -huh. is because like literally. Well, those ones were the, like 24 inches. Yeah, they're they were big. They're huge. huge. Yes. Okay. So let's but, go ahead and just press this out. I just thought that one went together so fast because it was so it big. It does. Yeah. It's a great quilt. I love it. There we go. All nice. right. So this is our block. I love it. The shoe fly stars block. There we go. So let's see. How okay. You do this. So this, the first row, you'll see that it sits like this. Mm -hmm. So so shoe fly in the bottom left, and then top left, and then bottom left. Oh, I see. And top left. You got that? Yeah. So four. And then the next row, the second row, is top right, bottom right. Oh, okay. <laughs> top okay. right. Bottom right. Okay, perfect. You got that? And then it just rotates exactly the same. Two more rows. Okay. It's four by four, so 16 blocks total. That and looks it's awesome. great. It's I mean, so it's just fun. that easy. So I hope you love it. It's just it's adorable. Perfect. All, All right, right, Misty, I think you're up. I am. Okay.
Misty, I love your quilt. Thank it's you so, so much. I love it too. I really wanted to play with the two different sizes of stars mm -hmm. and setting uh -huh. them together. And you know, I love tiny, so I decided to make smaller. Not, I mean, I just love how they circle super up small, not but still two and a half. But still two and a half. Much yeah. smaller would have been a lot, I think. Yeah. <laughs> right. But, that pinwheel in the middle. Yeah, but it was really, really fun. And I really love how it came together. And so the big stars are made exactly like Natalie's. You yeah. don't have to do anything different there. So exactly how you learned in her block. Mm -hmm. um, this is the same size quilt even. It's 80 by 80. Nice. And um, I used this oh, let me see. pretty floral bag. Oh, isn't that so sweet? sweet. Sweet it's and just, subtle. It's just soft and it's pretty. Really sweet. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. So let me show you what you're going to need to make this. You're going to need two packages of 10 inch squares, and I used Country Rose by. So two, I'm sorry. So two of the print. Two of the print. Okay. Yes. Two of the print. You're mm -hmm. fine. I used Country Rose by Lella Boutique for Moda, and it's just a really soft, beautiful she line. She does beautiful it fabric. Is so and pretty. then you also need one package of background 10 inch mm -hmm. squares, and mm -hmm. then an additional two yards. If you just want to get yardage and cut all your 10 inch squares, you could get five yards of right. your background. So yeah. that's totally up to you. That would work. Yeah, so like I said, the big star is made just like Natalie's. You can see we've just did our sets of contrasting fabrics and then you get two of these uh, blocks out of each of those sets mm -hmm. and you only need nine so you'll have an extra big star left over so you can make a throw pillow or something oh, that would That's be a great idea if you wanted yeah so just keep that in mind but let me show you how we're making the small stars so it's the same sets of three because you know we're still needing our contrast in the middle and our blues and our oranges same uh -huh. idea but we're just going to mark them a little bit different. So I'm just going to do it on this set for you. So you can see I've got my print and my background together. And I actually like to mark on the background side. I don't know that it really matters, but it's just... <laughs> I typically do just because it, it's usually all the same color. And exactly. I don't have to worry about getting a different color pen. And it's yeah. easiest to replace if you make a mistake. Exactly. True. The background is much easier to just... Exactly. And so now we're going to draw a center line. Um, both, direct. both directions, exactly. So I'll mark it like this, and then turn. And could you just cut that? You totally could, but I like to sew first because oh, okay. then I'm not sewing a bunch of little pieces. Perfect. So that's why I don't, but if you like it better cut, you can do that because right. essentially we're making um, the four half square triangles at a time out of a charm pack, mm -hmm. but we're doing it on a layer cake. So we're gonna sew all the way around the outside and on both sides of these lines. Okay. So this I'm, is sometimes called make 16, is Exactly, it? yep. Yeah. The easy 16. Easy 16. All right, here we go. Slower. All right. So if you were doing this on five inch squares, if you had matching five inch squares, you would just sew all the way around your five inch square. It's the same thing you're getting here. You do opposite sides of each line. Yep. And all the way around the outside edge, right? Exactly. And for me, this just is a little faster. It it's is. got those nice longer seams, so it saves a bit of time. Yeah. We're almost there. One more. One, One more. more. Close. Yep. One seam more. <laughs> Perfect. There we go. All right. And now you can see all the way around on both sides of the lines that we drew, we've stitched. And so now we're going to cut on those lines and cut these apart. Whoops. It's kind of a clever way, Misty. I usually cut mine in fourths and sew around. Really? Cut, sew around. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I thought I learned this from you. You might have. And no. I might have done it this way as, you know, in teaching several times. But I think every time I we also, grab a piece of fabric, you, just you know, we just up? do it. Well, I also leave these together. I don't cut on the lines. Oh. I cut this way and this way and this way. Oh. And then that way and that way and that way. And then across on the lines. See, isn't that funny? Yeah. See, in my mind, I do this because then once I have these, I know exactly how yep. they're cut. Yep. Yeah. 
So then now I just cut corner to corner on all yeah. of these. Now it totally makes sense. I just, yeah. I just love that about this triple play. I know we all do things mm -hmm. differently. And so, so shall I start pressing them open or are you, are you blocked? Yeah. I prefer the block lock, so okay. so let's do that. We can all press right. those open, and like I said, you would repeat this with all of your sets, just like we did for the larger star yeah, in Natalie. Yeah, so you do a white mm -hmm. in a color, an yep. orange in a color. No, I'm sorry, a white and the blue, the orange and the white, and then the orange and blue together. Correct. That's okay. right. Exactly. And you'd have four of each ones because you're using a layer cake. Yep. So you'll get four matching stars. Oh, that's right. so cool. Lots of stars. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we're so going to square these, and we are squaring them down quite a bit, but this was the closest I could get using mm -hmm. this method, this fast method. And so we're going to square these down to two and a half. So I'm just going to lay my block lock on here. Yeah, people will often ask me, why did you use this method? And I'm like, because I'm going for a certain size square. Exactly. Yes, and because of the fabric you have and whether you need prints to match or not match. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of li there's little, just little factors. Little things that factor into what methods you use. Yep. So then there's that one. I have some of these already squared, but I'll square one more just so you guys can see. Mm -hmm. So our the words always go on the background. I'm gonna slide this down as long as it looks straight-ish. I'm gonna have to square both sides. So we'll cut this side. And then I just like rotate and slide this down because it's the other side that we're looking for. Oh, there's a trick yep. for you. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I do that too. That's yep. awesome. Because you, you just turn the whole thing. You just turn the whole thing. I exactly. do not do that. I actually pick it up and figure out where the <laughs> thing goes again. But, yeah. but this is not the most brain friendly for me. Right. You, know, I you love the clearly, the clearly perfect, perfect yeah. which would totally work. You would just mm -hmm. trim it before you press sure, it open. Absolutely. So once we have it all squared up, we can just lay it out the exact mm -hmm. same way. So let's do that. I need my two colors together. So I have some of these ready. So we'll just make our pinwheel in the middle. I do just like Natalie. I always start with the pinwheel. I do too. Yeah, it's just way easier for my brain. So there's that. Well, it's almost like you, you don't know where anything else goes exactly. until you have that middle together. That's the uh, definite, right? Yeah. So, whoop, there there, there we there go. go. <laughs> legs out, legs out. Legs out, and then our orange. Yeah, my little mantra is always white to the middle, white to the middle. Yeah. That is helpful. All those things we can remind ourselves in our brain to... Mm -hmm. To get it right and white to the middle and then your outside corners are just two and a half on these blocks so simple yep so Cute. simple it goes together exactly the same way and then you have this darling little cute finished little block, block. Oh, and that's so cute so these ones i don't have as good of contrast but you can see they just our whole top row is made up of these little blocks and then the second row is just two of these blocks together Mm -hmm. and then a big block and then two small blocks and a big block and that's okay just... and i love uh, this is just a little uh, like a nerdy math thing but yeah. this totally comes out because you're two and a half together mm -hmm. makes four and a half so exactly. this entire thing is going to line up yeah perfectly you have all the exactly. little all the junctures with no worries about it was you know... very satisfying <laughs> to yeah. me <laughs> and i do that find it so interesting cool. so like here this oh, is yes. actually a contrasting this is a background that's in the pack it's in the pack and that's important to point mm -hmm. out because for this, you use every square in your pack. Yeah. So, yeah. so you can't really leave these out, but I wanted you guys to see that it's really okay. Um, it just looks a little bit different. You don't have quite as much um, print it, against your it background. It kind of gets lost a little bit. Gets lost, lost a little and bit. I think but so, I but then, it's... depending on your fabric line, you just choose background colors differently, maybe. Right, or, or I, could, could... I could have pulled it from the backing or a, yeah, if you added you a border. Yeah, you extra sure. squares from different fabrics that you have. Yeah, so I think that's the solid. key. You may not love this initially, uh -huh. but when you get the quilt all together, it's, it's like not beautiful. a big deal. It's yeah, still it's like not so a big deal. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. I love it. And I used what pattern did I use on the quilting? Curly, curly, curly twirly flowers. flowers. Yeah, yeah. which that's I just, one of my favorites too because it's just so yeah. full of movement and it's just mm -hmm. cheerful too. So I love floral. it. And I do think it's interesting that both of you did no border. Yeah. Yeah. Without well, I, without consulting each other, we've been so busy the yes, last few yes, weeks. We, have. we haven't we've even hardly seen, seen each other. other. <laughs> it's true. All right. Well, I'm going to show mine now. All right. Let's do it. All right. All right, you guys, ready for my quilt? Yes. yes. What do you think? It's so, so cute. cute. I love it fun? the little scrappy border. It's so fun. And I love the strips and yes. the scrappiness of it. Well, and I love how it comes together and it makes this like secondary pattern in the middle. 
I'm going to show you how to do this. So one of the fun things that happens when we do a triple play is that sometimes we get the same cut of fabric and sometimes we don't. So I did not. I had to make mine with a jelly roll strip. And so the construction so is, is completely different. So yeah. let me show you how to do this. So to make my quilt, you're going to need one roll of two and a half inch strips. And I've used this darling fabric, Buttercup and Slate by Cory Yoder of Coriander Quilts from Moda Fabrics. You're going to need some background fabric. You're going to need about two and a half yards. And this includes your squares and your two little borders. You're going to need some um, border fabric over here. And this border is one and a half yards and it's a nice big six inch border. And then the backing is five yards and it's this great little this great little gray Cute. print I thought it's was so such pretty. such a sweet little daisy it is the flower. The little daisy flowery Adorable. thing is really sweet. Yeah. She always does really, really dainty, pretty little Well, and girl. you can yeah. see your quilt pattern really well. Yeah. That shows yeah. up all perfect. So mine is sticky buns, which is almost curly twirly flowers without the blossoms. Exactly. So cute. Yeah. We all tend to like the same kind of things. Anyway, let me show you how to make this. So we have to, because we have jelly rolls, we have to now create our fabric. Nice. And so what I did was I just unrolled my roll and I put four strips together and I tried to get like one from every color family. Sure, oh, that's cute. And you just sewed them in long pieces. Okay. So when you sew four strips together, they become eight and a half inches square. And so that Ideally, is the size. Ideally, you should probably measure yours, right? Oh, you should. So all of our quarter inches are a little bit different, but... Um, we're hoping for eight and a half. Right. You know, if you do. But if, if it's not. The, so if the, it's not, all the squares just have to be the same size. Right. right. And so mine is five, six, seven, eight and a half. Let me count that again. That went kind of fast. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half. All right. So we're going to cut eight and a half. And I'm just going to cut my whole strip set. And, um, and I think you should get five squares, five of these squares. And since you're getting five and we use one, two, three, four to make our thing, then we have some extra squares and we can make stars. That's, we can make star, you know, not all of my stars match is what I'm saying. Okay. They're just scrappy. Perfect. And so, you know, you're just going to so go just along. You cut them all and then kind yep. of mix them up. Yep. And all what I time. need, actually, I'm going to cut two of these because I need, I need that many for my square. So let's see, we've got. Five, six, seven, eight, and a half. I like follow the bouncing ruler mm -hmm. line. <laughs> Dancing across there. So then you're going to take your background and you're going to cut some eight and a half inch squares right here. And we're going to put our eight and a half inch square on our strip set. Now you can see mine isn't perfect. So I'm actually going to use my eight and a half inch square as my measuring stick. So you will okay. sew along that. So we're going to sew all the way around this. And you're, so you're going to do two of these to the squares, and then one will have two of these together. And when I put these together, let me, I'll lay this out because this one is them together, but it's already done. So let me just lay this out here. All right, so Natalie, while you're sewing these two together, I'm gonna to go ahead and cut two more over here. Okay. And um, they'll be eight and a half because we're gonna sew those together. So we've got five, six, seven, eight and a half. So five, six, seven, eight, and my half is at the beginning. There we go. All right. So now when I put these together, I just turned them and put them together this way. Okay. So one goes sideways and one goes up and down. And then we're just going to sew all the, all way, the way around. around. And that makes your, it makes your box and it makes your side pieces go out. Now I didn't pay too close of attention to how they went together. I just knew that I needed four that were right <laughs> for the middle, you know, my pin, my, my pinwheel. And then, um, and my pinwheel is basically becomes a square. You can't see the light background, so we'll do that. All right. Which I think looks really. It's just different, right? I think it looks really cool. Yeah. So then, what we're going to do on these is we're going to cut these here. You, you want can, that one? You can okay. sew that one too. I didn't know for sure. If you were gonna well, you don't have to, but I might as well keep you busy, I right? Might as well. <laughs> so then, we're going to go ahead and cut this just 
corner to corner, and then these blocks are going to get squared to five and a half. All right. So go ahead and press those open. Do you have a lot of room there or? What do you mean? To square, for squaring. Is there plenty of room or is it kind of tight? It's, there's plenty of room, I think. Let me see how much room. Now that I've said plenty of room, I'm like, <gasps> Better All right. Check. No panic. <laughs> All right. No so this panic. is our block lock. There's curious. five and a half. So, so we have about between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. Plenty of room. Just plenty of room. All right. I'm going to trim this but off not a here. Lot of waste, which is great. No, not well, a Well, it's of enough waste. that if your seam allowance varies a little bit, it's going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So there's that one. I should have one of you block lock girls doing the squaring. Oh, this one is perfect. I mean, on one side. Just have to trim one side. I one love it when that happens. I know, right? Just one side. Saves time. Yep. Five and a half. Mm-hmm. There we go. One more. Before you know it, you'll be a block lock expert too. I will. Well, it's interesting because once you figure out what what you're doing by squaring your blocks, which I figured out with the Clearly Perfect, then other tools suddenly make sense. Started working which, for you. Oh yeah, here, yeah. iron those. Oh, sorry, I missed them. And then we're gonna cut this one. I was and slacking. Too. No, you're never <laughs> slacking, please. I was just watching you square. I actually just like love squaring. Kind of it's so satisfying to me. Is that right? Oh too. yeah. I, oh, that's interesting. I actually love squaring, period. Yes. I, I like to do it. I'm the same. I, I enjoy that too. Well, that's kind of how I feel about binding. That's I love true. to bind. I love binding too. It's so meditative. I feel like binding is the only time I ever slow down. Like yeah, forces you, you can, to sit still. You can yeah. like watch a little movie yeah. or listen to a podcast. Oh, I don't I don't know where you're putting these. Are these oh, the olds I'm or the new? Sorry, I don't know. Uh, I'm just pressing. Five and a half. Just pressing along. Oh, hang on. Make sure you're going to five and a half and not cutting it too short. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait a minute. All right, here we go. Oh my goodness. Five and a half. There we go. Five and a half. Five and a half. Yep. Repeat it 55 times. You're All right. Fine. So I need eight of these of the, of the, of the, um, this color and four of the others. So count how many I've squared here. Cause I know I squared four. Maybe I have to square them all. Oh yeah. Cause you only get this many from each block, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, quilt math is hard for me. It's hard. <laughs> it's not. It can be hard like, for everybody. Oh, look, I love the math. And I'm like, sometimes mm, math not is so hard much. for everyone, even I think math these are people. Good to go. Are they? Yeah. That yeah. one I'm not sure, but these ones that are one squared. Looks like it needs okay. a little squaring. Needs a little trimming. Mm -hmm. Got some. Just a little haircut. And then here's the these ones. But you have some squared. Do you want to use those? Ah, uh, let's use the ones I got right there. Okay. It'll make more sense visually, probably, because those are just extras. You know, oh, I mean, those are like oh, they don't the match. next block. They don't match anything. Yeah. Perfect. Which a lot of mine on the on the quilt are. Mm -hmm. So then we'll square these to five and a half. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> there we go. There's one of those and two. You can see I get turned around with this thing sometimes. Oh, that's okay. Doesn't want to lock in there, mm -hmm. does it? Your seam just has to be pressed one direction and then the words go on the, oh. the opposite side. Yeah. You know, I always feel like during these tutorials, like I have to get it done so fast and everybody is like, don't rush, Jenny, we'll wait for you. Yeah. And I'm just like, that's so nice. <laughs> All right, so we may take a little more time this time because we just want to show you all the things. Oh. There's that one. Make sure this is good on both sides. It is pretty good on both sides, just a little shaven. And the last one here. And then my block is actually going to go together the same way as the girls, with the exception of a few blocks in the center. All right. 
go. So let's look at this right here. So we're going to put these in the middle and um, you can figure out how, uh, how you want them to go together. If you do, if you line them up this way, they line together as a square. And of course you'll have two sides, you know, you have two different ones. So I've see how that makes a square and then these mm -hmm. go yeah, out. That looks great. And then because it's all scrappy, we don't really have to worry about what, what you know, matching next. anything yeah. up or anything like that. We just put the whites together to the middle like this. Wait for it. Wait, wait. No, this way. There we go. Whew. Sometimes it's work. Wait for it. Oh, this is my center right here. Yep, I lost my center for a second. I lost my North Star. So cute. And so this just becomes this scrappy, fun, no stress block. Those came, those are. So is that right? Let's switch this one with yeah. that one because then at least you have contrasting colors. It, it color. keeps the scrappiness. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, it still matches. Okay, wait, maybe this one. You're going to drive yourself nuts now. I am going to drive. All right, so let me cut some five, in, five and a half inch squares on this. So this is a five and a half inch strip. I'm going to leave it folded and I'm going to just cut uh, some five and a half inch squares right here. I've cut off my selvages. And five is going to come over. Wait, don't put it under there. I might cut it. <laughs> don't cut it. Don't cut that one either. I won't. One, two, three, four, five. I should have had these five and a half inch squares ready. That's okay. But that's all right. Cut. You all right. It. Now it's ready. We'll wait for you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So these go in the corners. Now we have to put all this back together. There we go. Puzzle, puzzle. Oh, no. This way. Oh, there. Thank you. There. I get by with a little help from my friends. That's why we have each other. We lost one. No, there it is. All right. So this is then my finished star. But every star has a little bit different. And so like this star right here, this is my star block right here. But in this corner, I've put another one of these half square triangle blocks. So, you know, you would take a we random a extra, you know, and just put it over there on that side. Facing so, out. Yes, so this one faces to the center. So it's this block, this block has mm -hmm. two, and then this center block, all four of them are done. And that's what gives it the fun look. So this one so over really here again. Just, you have four in the corners uh -huh. that have one, one, one. corner. Yep. And, and then, then your, four your middle squares have two. each have two, and then the very center square has one on every side. Exactly. Right. Has four. And of course, you guys know, I, I mixed all these up, so I didn't have one star. You know, I didn't have to go right. through and go, oh, these this is matching. Match yeah, so I didn't have to matter. do any of that because I just literally sewed all my strips together, cut them into squares, and then made all the squares, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and then went ahead and just mishmashed them together. So it's that so really cool. Thing. It just looks so great. So once you sew all your blocks together, you know, you can get five of those out of each one. And there was this little piece left. Yes. And so I went and took those little pieces. And of course I sewed some of them together, but they're, they're all going to be just a little different because it's your leftover, right? But I didn't yeah. want to waste it. So I cut them all into two inch strips and I did this little outer border. And so, so, so good. I, I did a one and a half border. inch inner on both sides. Uh -huh. and um, and then my two and a one and a half and then this six inch border out here. So you're going to make nine of these stars and the quilt ends up being 78 by 78 once you get all your little borders on, you know, okay. and I love a border. So I'm yeah. good with that. It's so, just so great. 78 so by cute. 78, you know, three quarters of the yard for binding. And there's my back again. So, so cute. cute. Had Beautiful. to show it twice. <laughs> Anyway, that was my uh, take on the dashing star with a jelly roll, which was a little bit more brain work. <laughs> a little you know? challenge. A little challenge. So fun. Turned out great. I hope you guys loved it. I think this came together really fun. Mm -hmm. We have three new great ideas. Mine was a little challenging because it was a jelly roll, but that's it's fun so as cute. well so too. And I love yours, the different sizes and what you did with this. Really cool ideas. We hope you enjoyed this triple play on the Dashing Star from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and I am here with Natalie and with Misty and we hope you enjoyed watching our latest triple play. You can find us together on the third Friday of each month as we hit another tutorial out of the park. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe and click that bell to be notified each time we release a new video. See you next time.